Welcome, dear viewer, to an LRCW special where I want to give my mentally challenged thoughts on that Disney show Ahsoka. And this video will be a little different than my normal format. It will be more of a reflection than a reviewing. I have made it no secret that I thought Ahsoka was one of the dumbest shows I've ever seen. And after getting hounded by the soy latte Disney shills in the comments, I thought, you know what, I'm going to ejaculate my thoughts even hardlier now. And this all comes from an outsider's perspective, as I've never watched Clone Wars, or Rebels, or even read a Star Wars book. I've only watched the prequels, the sequels, and of course, the cringe calls. So it's entirely based on the actual writing of the show and the impression that it left on me, and not the key jingling member berries. So first things first, what was the plot about? Well, simply put, Ahsoka finds a map or thingy somehow. I mean, never explain how she knew it was there, but she just knew it was there. And that map or thingy has the location to a planet in another galaxy where a friend, the Mad Goose Wizard Ezra is, but also where Big Daddy Thrawn resides, who's apparently the smartest military mind in the galaxy. Yeah, we'll get to that one later. So she recruits Sabine, an old friend of hers, to unlock the encryption on the map orb, as for some reason the oversized kettle couldn't do it. When we later find out that all it took was a slight twisting of the top. But Sabine decides to run off with the map orb thingy after Ahsoka specifically told her to keep it on her ship, as that map orb is the most important object in the galaxy. But then, Sabine gets stabbed by a lightsaber because all the bad guys are after her as well and knew exactly where to find her. Miraculously, she survives somehow! And literally somehow, because no one can explain how a saber of billowing plasma doesn't incinerate her on contact. But she loses the map orb to the bad guys and then a whole lot of irrelevant shenanigans happen until they all end up on the planet six episodes later. So they have to fight the big daddy Thrawn to stop him from returning to the galaxy in that halo thingy. But they all fail and he totally escapes. Okay, simple premise. Must be easy to expand, right? Spread it out over five episodes possibly? Well, no. Because what could have been five episodes was filled with useless, extensive, boring scenes that made it eight in total. Let's take for example the first episode where we had two time wasting scenes that could only be described as a dysentery of boredom. Ahsoka is walking. Ahsoka is staring. Nothing is happening. So it completes a puzzle that gives her the map or thingy and it took seven minutes with no dialogue or explanation at all. Then later in the episode, Sabine, or Elliot Page as I like to call her, now has the map orb that she stole from Ahsoka and is working on it at her home. Which of course, as a stunning woman of brave, manages to crack the encryption that contains the location to the planet in two minutes just by looking at the hologram. But was this scene significant? Um, no. It's never mentioned again and it did nothing to help the characters or even devise a strategy. It was completely freaking useless. And furthermore, we also have General Green Lady, a woman of power whose only use to the plot was placing a tracker on the hyperdrive in episode 2. After that, she contributes nothing. Her plotline is boring, she's boring. But for some reason, we follow her story of being a general for the next 6 episodes. I guess a weak link could be made that she rescued the Orange Lady from the ocean in episode 5, but let's face it guys, the Orange Lady survived pretty much the entire day submerged underwater, so it would have been absolutely fine anyway. But there is also another, the biggest time wasting side quest in television history. And its only purpose was for the member Berry key jangling for the Disney Sims to deep throat Filoni's garbage. Yes, that's right audience, the Anakin episode. Now, I am not knocking seeing Hadrian Christie again, or his awesome skills, because damn it boy, you still got it big time. But the insertion of this character in the show had zero bearing on the plot whatsoever. I mean, there were only three episodes after, and what purpose did it serve? Hmm, well Ahsoka the Orange son became Gandalf the Orange, and that's about it. Zero character development from it. Other than letting Elliot Page get away with pretty much galactic genocide. But then again, she did make her a Padawan, even after she stole the map or thingy, and then the bad guys got it, so it's hardly a development. And that leads me nicely onto the characters. Let's have a look at the bad guys, specifically that evil bitch Morgan. Who the hell is she? Well, there is zero explanation for the casual viewer, other than she's evil. Great character profiling there, Mr. Dave Filoni. But even worse, Leah, she barely had dialogue, and when she did, she'll just tell Baden what to do and then just straight up walk off. 
If you want the audience to hate someone, give them a reason to. For all I know, she's a crazy cat lady just wanting some of that big daddy fraud action. If you want the show to be a success, you've got to give the potential new audience some kind of background, as not all of us are going to watch 200 cartoon episodes for homework now, are we, Mr. Cowboy Man? Unless it's Dragon Ball Z, I still love that show. Anyway, in episode 6, we learn that the evil Bhutan clan was sending mysterious telecommunications to that evil bitch Morgan, directing her to come to this planet. When there was zero build up to it all season, just rolled up one day and yep, hey dog, glad you got our head television transmissions. Oh, do you want to be like wearing some face paint like us too? Oh, you're a wizard, Harry. Hope you don't die in a few scenes' time. Great stuff. What would have made that work is if when having scenes from Morgan's perspective, maybe she has some kind of distorted dreams or whatever calling her to the destination. Instead, we got fuck all. Bane and Shin, on the other hand, are two characters I wanted to see more of. In fact, I'd rather this show was based on them. They had very interesting master-apprentice dynamics. It was disciplined and exactly what you expect from a Jedi and a Padawan. The master imparts knowledge. The Apprentice will do as they're told, just as was shown right here. Unlike the dynamic between Ahsoka and Dickface Sabine, which was built entirely on distrust, backstabbing, and zero discipline. And even worse, Leah, Bane and Shin were only given a maximum of 5 minutes per episode. And that's totally a crime! I mean, they are the greatest characters. Poor wasted Bane and Skull. You know, I thought one of the strongest lines in this entire series, which, let's be honest, it's not hard to pick amongst the steaming pile of shit the rest was, was when the evil blondie asked him if he missed the old ways when he was a Jedi. And he replied that he did. But only the idea of it. And it was delivered with an incredible emotion. Just that gave him more depth and insight than any of the other bitches. Sadly though, he is a male and this show is her story in the making. Therefore, that avenue of characterization died right there. He even pointed out later in the show that on this mysterious planet there is a mysterious power that is calling to him. And he is going to discover it. And, and okay, I'm very very intrigued by this. Way more interested than whatever the freaking orange lady is up to. So what does the old cowboy man do? Well, he drops his storyline from that moment onwards only to cameo in the very last scene of the final episode and he's standing on a statue for 10 seconds. And the worst part about it is if Disney for some reason renews a second season of this hot garbage, then Ray Stevenson's can never fill that role again. What a waste of potential in the name of winning a Sophie Award. I do hope that helped out the stock though, eh, Bobby boy? Oh, oh no, it's still an utter disaster. Then, there was Metal Helmet Gimp Man, who after all the Disney simps were circle jerking who it could be on the internet, just ended up to be trap gas. What a fucking letdown. Let's move on to General Green Lady. Wow, what a character that was. If she wasn't a 5 foot 8 green alien, I would have thought she was season 8 Jon Snow with all that copy pasted dialogue. She's the queen! I'm a general! This character's usefulness died out in episode 2. As soon as she placed that convenient tracker on the departing hyperdrive, that was it. There was no need for her. Instead what we got was episode after episode of her butt not complaining and telling everyone that she's a general. When showing zero qualities that actually makes up a general. Uh, she's a complete failure of absolute likability. She's dishonest, she's arrogant, totally insubordinate and takes her only child to an active hostile zone. You know, I don't remember saying to my son, Hey, let's review Crap Riding Junior. Do you fancy a holiday in Somalia? I heard it's great this time of year. Loads of pirates to play with. How's about the orange lady then? Boy, where do I start with this? Her usefulness died out in episode 1. Literally everything that happens after finding the map orb would more or less still happen. Just slightly easier for the bad guys. And the show is bloody called Ahsoka. As a matter of fact, I did some extra reading and it turns out that the evil bitch Morgan knew where the map orb was anyway, so remove Ahsoka entirely and everything still happens. Her dialogue is also completely uninspired. It seems her only trait is to fold her arms and give a dead ass pan expression. When compared to Midi Ahsoka in episode 5, who arguably is a better actress and seemed to hold way more passion and weight within her words. You can literally replace Big Ahsoka with a moody teenage goth girl and I can't tell the bloody difference. Even worse, Leah, she's not even the main character in this show. Instead, she's just Sabine's doormat. If you have an apprentice who has literally just doomed the entire galaxy by knowingly disobeying your orders, it was not a mistake, it was done on purpose, you'll not only disown that bitch, 
what you would probably do a Sabine deletion. Because boy, if she's gonna doom the entire galaxy through selfish behavior, then she's gonna do it again. Ah, oh, shit leopards don't change their spots, Randy. Instead, the orange lady consistently rewards her. Where is the lesson for young viewers? Having no loyalty amongst friends is a good thing? Get the fuck out of here. But something really did become apparent during this show, and I don't want to be mean to Rosario Dawson here, but she can't fight. Every lightsaber scene that she was in, I ended up feeling bad for her. Either she doesn't have the gift of waving a stick around, or they forgot to pay the choreographer. Take, for example, the fight with Anakin. You can clearly see that he is far better than her, and in any real life situation, would have turned her into a roast chicken. But nope, this is the modern age with the modern audience, so somehow, she bests him twice. Not buying it, mate. Or even when defending from blasters, it looks like she's doing a line dance, rather than defending against certain death. What a load of crap. Then there was the mad goose wizard himself, Ezra. A weak, pathetic excuse for a Y chromosome who seemed inept to carry out the simplest of tasks without getting the female of powers to save him. What a little bitch. You know, all he was in this show was the vessel for the message to work through. I have literally got so little to say about him because essentially he was a non-character. Which was a letdown because throughout the show leading up to his appearance, it felt like he was the heroic Jedi who sacrificed himself to save the galaxy. And this is what we get. Some hippie with erectile dysfunction. You know, I'm surprised he didn't roll up with a soy latte whinging that there's a climate emergency while glued to a fucking road. And now we come to Sabine. Well, where the hell do we start with this one? From the very first scene it was clear just by her face what we were to expect. A smug, selfish, boring, arrogant asswipe who shows little foresight and loyalty to her own friends and master. She is in fact the bad guy in the show. Ahsoka says don't take the map orb off the ship. Takes the map orb off the ship. Ahsoka says destroy the map orb. Sabine gives it to the enemy. Ezra sacrifices himself to save the galaxy. Sabine undoes all of it and has put the entire galaxy under threat again. Even worse, at the end of the season, she has learned nothing. She is still an utter, utter bitch. Yeah, and why meant to be rooting for these guys again? It doesn't make sense unless it is aimed at the modern audience. You know, a strong female lead who could take a lightsaber to the gut and still be ready for breakfast in the next morning? She can even repair ships that have been clearly hit on the wing by connecting terminals in the cockpit. She can even do the software engineering on an assassin droid that never blew up for some reason, even though in the first episode they did. Wow, have you just been outnumbered by a bunch of alien samurais? Don't worry, she can kill them all to absolute death without getting a single ouchie. Yeah, totally relatable character. One of the basics in writing is having a protagonist that is either likeable, relatable, or somewhat aspirable. She is none of these. But the worst, most retarded plot development was the fact that she could not use the force at all, proven in multiple scenes throughout the show, but then could for some kind of reason without any montage. Way to ruin the force, cowboy man. I hope Kathleen Kennedy cleaned her balls before teabagging you. Sabine never showed an ounce of emotional expression either. I mean, she completes her goal of fighting the Mad Goose, and all she does is give him a little hug. After all of that, all of the hardships, the fact that you've betrayed your entire galaxy, and your master is potentially dead, and you couldn't even shed one single tear at the bittersweet moment. What a load of utter shite. But to be fair, if you use the term bittersweet in front of Cowboy Man, he'll probably ask you what kind of candy that is. He has absolutely no idea what he's doing. Let's flip to the final character, Big Daddy Thrawn. Now, being an absolute casual to the Star Wars lore, I was guaranteed by the internet people that Mr. Blue Man was the smartest military mind in the galaxy. Yes, very formidable, incredibly feared, the heir to the Empire. Yeah, like shit, that's true. Disney Fraud is arguably the dumbest character in the show, and it started off so well. He knew that Ahsoka was coming, so placed shit tons of mines in the location of her assumed arrival. A pretty good idea, although no one knows where they got those thousands of mines from. Surprisingly, they all failed though when she did arrive. What the hell that happened? So Thrawn goes to plan B. Ahsoka is a Disney woman of power, so he knows that it's not worth wasting copious amounts of resources on her. 
Instead, he opts to inconvenience her and distract until they are ready to go. Because as soon as they leave that planet, those guys are utterly screwed. They cannot leave at all. And okay, does sound great. Oh wait, just when they were ready to go, they decide to hang around for absolutely no reason, just long enough for Ahsoka to come fight them. And then they lose a whole load of resources. And evil bitch Morgan even died. Someone you want on your side. Yeah, real smart mate. Fucking Mensa man over here. He even got told by Goddy McGoldface over there that the two fighters that he sent out earlier in the episode actually disabled their ship. And that's great! Now go send two more and blow it to fucking pieces. Oh wait, that's too smart. Let's not forget about letting Sabine go either. And then sending out Bade and an evil blondie to track her. Uh, Big Daddy, have you ever heard of a tracking device? You don't need to waste their time when they could be helping you prepare to leave. And if you're going to double cross them, you do it at the final stages. Doesn't take a genius to work that one out. Then again, I guess Thrawn is only as smart as Cowboy Man. So pretty bloody stupid then. I'm actually going to propose something that is a small fix to Thrawn to actually display his apparent intelligence in the context of what happened in the show. Okay, so we're going to go back to the beginning of the series. The motivations to get to the planet. So Thrawn knows that Sabine wants to rescue the Mad Goose Wizard. And by getting her to come to the planet would mean she would go find him and Thrawn could kill both of them as revenge for what they did to him. Kind of similar to what actually happened in the show. So he uses the Night Sisters to beam their magic gobbledygook to her and impregnate false dreams of Ezra being tortured big time by Thrawn. It makes her desperate to save him, while at the same time the Putan clan are beaming their call to that evil bitch Morgan as well, just as they did in the show. So Sabine's character arc and explanation for completely betraying Ahsoka and the entire galaxy is now justified in her mind, and the audience will actually understand why she's about to betray her own galaxy. And she can use the Orish Lady's trusting nature to get what she needs to go to get Ezra. It would also give weight to the scene where she gives the map orb to Balin, as she thinks her best friend is dying to death. Now to Thrawn, he doesn't actually care who turns up to the planet. It will be nice to kill the Mad Goose Wizard, but in truth, Sabine is also just an insurance policy. If that evil bitch Morgan is to fail to get the map orb, and the good guys get it, then Sabine would be the one to push for an expedition to the planet. And if the Republicans turn up, well, Thrawn would just simply kill them to death and then take their ship and go back to his own galaxy. In essence, he will win in both scenarios, as there is no way to escape the planet otherwise. Sabine will be exonerated for being an insufferable bitch, and it would show that Thrawn has the ability to plan and strategize. Everything can still happen in the show, but this addition makes more sense than, yeah, wanting to see my mate again, so I just put the entire galaxy under threat. Everything else though, like not sending another batch of TIE fighters to finish off their ship, and simply not taking off as soon as the cargo transfer is complete, literally has no other explanation than Cowboy Man needing dumb shit to happen, so more dumb shit can happen. Also, in the final episode when they're climbing the stairs, why didn't Thrawn just close the bloody doors? They were wide open for the orange lady to simply stroll right up. What a bunch of dumb crap. Although I think the biggest crime in this show was the utterly absurd plot conveniences. The worst I have seen since the rise of Skywalker, where in the middle of a desert, in a completely random location, fell into quicksand into a tunnel below, which was directly where the dagger they needed was. It's almost as if someone smoked the biggest, fattest Zuby and came up with it out of their ass. Let's have a look at episode 1. Assassin droids conveniently have a countdown timer to self-destruct giving Ahsoka enough time to get out of that place. Episode 2 turn up at the Empire Scrapyard at the precise time that they needed to as the hyperdrive was just leaving and General Green Lady just happened to have a spare tracker on her ship so they know where it was going. Episode 3 and probably the dumbest moment in the show. The orange lady manages to put on an entire spacesuit in the space of a scene as the fighters are barreling towards her. And then one of them decides to fly directly into her lightsaber and completely explodes and straight up dies. Episode 4, they land on an entirely alien planet and were conveniently within a brief jogging distance from the bad guys who were only now trying to decode the map or thingy when they've had days if not weeks to do it. Episode 5, General Green Lady conveniently brought her son to an active hostile zone, who conveniently is force sensitive so he can conveniently locate the orange lady in the ocean, who by now should have been dead. Episode 6, Elliot Page on a completely alien planet just so happens to come across a turtle hobbit after a few hours of walking who conveniently just so happens to live the Mad Goose Risen Ezra on an entire fucking planet. 
Get the fuck out of here! Episode 7, Ahsoka, who randomly got into a space whale, somehow, in an entire universe of over 700 quintillion planets, happened to turn up at the precise planet she needed to get to. Episode 8, Thrawn, after he finishes the cargo transfer, conveniently doesn't take off and instead starts docking his Star Destroyer to the Halo on the platform where the totally good guys can get to him, instead of literally just doing it anywhere but there. This was just surface level plot convenience. I could have added copious amounts. Now, I understand that plot convenience is a viable method of progressing a story when used intelligently, but in every episode, with varying degrees of retardedness, you can get the fuck out of here. That was dumb as hell. Yeah, this is the hallmark of a phony masquerading as a writer getting paid millions to churn out utter crap. At the end of the day, this show was hollow and it was built around lightsabers go burr, nothing else. It lacks any depth or intelligence, and all the Disney Star Wars simps literally crying over Anakin Vadering are the reason Disney don't even bother trying anymore. Demand better or receive crap. Big shout out to our Patreon boys and goys. Stephen P, Taylor J, Hetzer J, The Mighty Pen. The Subscribe button. Is over.